Okay, now I have question number one from practice paper C of Pure Mathematics to the International A-Level paper. And these questions um, I have compiled from um, various sources. Now this one is from some of the material from the uh, new UK A-Level, which is, you know, I've taken parts of that which relate to the International A-Level. Um, just to get some practice as there's no past papers. The first paper for this is going to be in June 2019, which is in a few days time. So this is why I've made this practice paper. This is um, one out of the three practice papers I've made um, compiled from various sources. And you can find links to them in the description of this video below. You can find uh, links to those papers and others and also topic wise videos and, and you'll be able to find from the playlists of these papers the PDF version so you could try to answer the questions yourself and then see how you did. Now in, in this question we are asked to expand 1 plus 3 over x squared simplifying each term. Now I'm going to make some space and continue. Okay so um, now we want to expand this bracket um, expand 1 plus 3 over x squared simplifying each term all right so now here we have a square bracket so we can do this in numerous ways one of the ways we could do is using the pattern where we square the first term so you can have 1 squared which is 1 and then we have 2 times the first term times the second term and then we square the last term this is like they're using the pattern so you got 1 of course I'll just write it like that 1 squared plus 6 over x plus 9 over x squared. Okay, if you want to, if you're not so comfortable with that pattern, you can just do it like the traditional long way. Okay, where you're going to multiply 1 by 1 and 1 by 3 over x and 3 over x by 1 and 3 over x by 3 over x and we end up with 1 plus 6 over x plus 9 over x squared. Okay, so both of those ways are fine. All right, by now you should really be used to this, this short kind of method. Um, but also something else we need to take into account uh, is a mistake that many students make. They would say 1 plus 9 over x squared, where they would square this term and square that term, and they'd forget about the middle term. So please, I don't want to see that error from my students. I've, um, you get that error maybe in grade A, grade 9. But when you get to um, A level, those mistakes should not really be there. Okay, so please take care of that. I see that too often and it shouldn't really be there at this stage. Okay, now, then it says use a binomial expansion to find an ascending powers of x, the first four terms in the expansion of, well, that's not related to the first part, so it's a separate type of question. So let's just do this. Use the binomial expansion to find an ascending powers of x, the first four terms in this expansion. Now, the binomial expansion can be done in, in, in different methods. Now, the new IAL book doesn't show the method that I actually prefer. Okay, I prefer the method where um, it will be valid for when you have a whole number here as a power, or you have a fraction here, or you have a negative power. Okay, the NCR method, which is the traditional way that most people know, um, won't work when it comes to fractional and negative powers, which isn't a problem for P2, but it's a problem for uh, P4 when you get to P4 when you're doing A2 maths, because the NCR uh, method won't work then. Okay, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to uh, show you the way that I like first which is basically using this pattern where it says 1 plus x to the power of n equals 1 plus nx plus n times n minus 1 over 2 factorial times x squared plus, and it continues on in the same pattern, n times n minus 1 times n minus 2 over 3 factorial times x cubed plus and so on. Okay, and this actually is in the formula book. This formula here is in the formula book itself. So it's not something that if you forget, it's a problem. Although once you've done a few questions, it's easy. Now what you've got to take care of is a few things. First of all, it should always say one in this position. And in this case, it does say one, so there's no problem. If it doesn't say one, you've got to take out um, that number 
and then divide this term by that number. But here we don't have to worry because it does say 1. So it should be 1 plus something x. And the other thing you got to take care of, this x is whatever term is over here. Okay, so the x in the formula in this case is going to be 3 over 4x. Okay, so your n is going to be 6. Your x is going to, so here your n is going to be 6. And your x in the formula is going to be 3 quarters x. Okay, so now let's just go ahead. So 1 plus 3 quarters x to the power of 6. Now we want to find the first four terms. Now the first term is 1. That counts as the first term. Plus nx. You have 6 times 3 quarters x. You have 3 over 4x. Plus n times n minus 1. So that's 6 times 5 over 2 factorial. Now 2 factorial means 2 times 1, which is just 2. 2 times 1. Okay, times. Then you've got 3 over 4x squared. So here we have the first term, the second term, the third term, we've got one more to go. So we're going to have 6 times 5 times 4 times 3 factorial, which is 3 times 2 times 1. Oops, I don't need to write the 1. Times 3 over 4x to the power of 3. Remember, all of this has to be raised to the power of 3. So let's continue down here. So that's going to give me 1 plus, now that 4 and that 6 will cancel, leaving me with 3 over 2, so that's 9 over 2x. Okay, let's cancel out stuff from here. So you've got 2 and the 6 cancel, leaving me with 3. I want, I'll square before I start cancelling out, because it's, it's very easy to make a mistake here. So I'm going to have 3 times 5 is 15, and this is going to give me 9 x squared over 16 okay because you got 3 fives of 15 you square everything inside this plus and then let's try to cancel this 3 times 2 and the 6 cancel out so if it's 5 times 4 which is 20 times 3 cubed is 27 so you have 27 x cubed over 4 cubed which is 64 okay so now we can Simplify each term and write our answer. So you have 1 plus 9 over 2x plus 15 times 9. Okay, that gives you 135. I don't think it simplifies. No, so you have 135 over 16 times x squared plus and 20 over 20 and we're going to have for the last term we're going to have here 20 times 27 x cubed over 64 okay so let's just stick that in the calculator we have 20 times 27 over 64 which gives us 135 over 16 again so it's plus Oops, what happened there? Plus 135 over 16. Over 16 times x cubed. Okay. So my pen's missing around there. Okay, so there we have part b those are simplified you can't go any simpler than that now we're going to go on to the next question which is part c hence find the coefficient of x in the expansion of 1 plus 3 over x squared plus times 1 plus 3 over 4 x to the power of 6. so basically we need the results of the first two parts of the question so we have here the results of those questions from the other page so i have to basically multiply these two together well or set it up for multiplication and then think about what the x term is going to be the coefficient of x so let's write them as a product first we have 1 plus 6 over x plus 9 over x squared times 1 plus 9 over 2x plus 135 over 16 x squared plus 135 over 16 x cubed now, 
we're thinking about the coefficient of x. Okay, so if I multiply 1 by 1, I'm not going to get an x term. If I plus multiply 1 by 9 over 2, I will get an x term. So that's going to be an x term. Will we have any more? Well, by multiplying the 1 by these, I won't. I'll have x squared and x cubed. However, 6 over x. If I multiply that by 1, that's not an x term because x is in the denominator. It can't be in the denominator. It has to be in the numerator. 6 over x times 9 over 2x. Well, the x's will cancel, leaving me with a constant. However, 6 over x times 135 over 16 x squared, one of the x's will cancel, leaving an x in the numerator. So therefore, that's another x term. So I've got to add to this 6 times 135 over 16. Okay, so that will be another x part. And then we've got to think about, um, if I continue, of course, if I multiply 6 over x by this, I'm going to get an x squared term, not an x term. However, 9 over x squared, multiplying by the first, the second, and the third terms, won't give me an x term. You will have x squared in the denominator, you'll have x in the denominator, you'll have a constant. However, multiplying 9 over x squared by 135 over 16 x cubed will leave me with an x on the numerator. So that's going to be the next part, 9 times 135 over 16. And that should give me the coefficient of x if I add those together. So I'm going to have here 9 over 2 plus... 6 times 135 over 16. And I'm going to plus, add to that, 9 times 135 over 16 again. And that gives me 2097 over 16. 2097 divided by 16. And that's the coefficient of x. Okay, and there we have answered that question.